Bwana Yesu asifue sana. Amen. Yeah, I'm Karo Moses. Naitwa Karo Moses. Nimeokoka. Amen. Wacha niongee kwa Kiswahili. Ya yeah, nimeokoka. Asubuhi jema na shukuru kwa sababu ya wema na fadhili za Mungu maishani mwangu na zaidi pia kwa mzee wangu. We are now going to 20 years in marriage na tujaona Mungu ametuacha. Na nimekuja hapa kusema ya kwamba nilipo uh, shikwa mkono na wazazi nilionyeshwa kanisa la Bwana na ni ndani ya kanisa la Bwana niliweza kuokoka nimeweza kukaa na tukakutana na Moses kule Tarakea Dar es Salaam nikiwa msichana kwa kijana na hiyo ingine ni history na kwa hivyo nashukuru waliponiambia nikuje nyumbani mwa Bwana praise the name of the Lord wacha tukae pale tuweze kusikiza vile Bwana ametuandalia siku ya leo najua maisha yetu itabadilishwa baraka amen amen let's give her a hand of prayer applause makofi thank you karo for studying together with me asante kwa kusimama nami all the years since we met for the last almost 20 years now kwa miaka karibu 20 utagia tulipata she has been my support system amekuwa ni msaidizi wangu mkuu na si kusema sababu wengine wanasema I'm not saying because others have been saying so. Uh, it is because she has supported me all through. Praise the name of the Lord. Those who are upstairs, praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Bwana asifiwe. Uh, as uh, Pastor Edward has said, I am Moses Mwangi. Naitwa Moses Mwangi. And I'm born again. I love Jesus. As Lord and Savior of my life. He called me when I was a young man. In high school. And he has been faithful. And even this day. I continue to confess. Of the goodness. And the faithfulness of God in my life. Because he has been good. There is a, that word he wanted to pronounce. Kiroko. That is the name he wanted to say. There, there kuna kuanga na contradiction somewhere. Kuna <laughs> kwako kuchanganyikiwa kidogo. Eh that man that man. Amen. Yeah, Moses Kagwe Mwangi. Kiroko is my brother. Ah uh, Kiroko ni ndugu yake. Because of identity. Lakini kwa sababu ya still receive that name. Naipokea tu jina ile pia. Praise the name of the Lord. Bwana asifiwe. Uh, we are blessed together with Karo. We have three teenagers. Uh, and we thank God. I want to thank God this day. For our bishop in Asbensia. And Pastor Reverend Aris. Together with the leadership of this church. The pastoral team. The G12, the ministry team, and the leadership of men's fellowship. Studying before you this, giving, being given this opportunity, it is really harboring to me. And I do not take it for granted. I'm so humbled that among us all of us here, I would be given this opportunity. And I am been praying and trusting God that uh, through me you will be ministered. That through me you will hear the word of God and you will not go home the way you came because it has it is the lord's working in us let me start by saying that we are in a celebration mood of 40 years since the deliverance church simaman started 40 years this ministry has been learning and when you think about 40 years for those who are now 40 years old they have a history they can tell they have passed through so many things and uh, they are looking forward to go ahead with some more years even as they do their exploits. And as a church, I know our vision carrier 
When he looks back at 40 years, that very humble beginning, that very humble beginning, and here we are this day, what can we say? It has been impressed in my spirit all through when I was praying for this day. And I just want us to read briefly. Not, it's not my sermon, but I want us to read in the book of Joshua, chapter 14. 14, verse 7 to 11. Joshua 14. And uh, verse 7 to 11. Just to, just to help us understand where we are. Uh, and we read, I was 40 years old when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to explore the land. I brought him back a report according to my conviction. Praise the name of the Lord. 40 years is the time that this gentleman was, was, was sent to go and spy the land when he was 40 years. And he brought a report. What I want you to understand, he was 40 years. And now I want to read verse 10 because of time. Verse 10. Now, now then, just as the Lord promised, he has kept me alive for 45 years since the time he said this to Moses. While Israel moved about in the wilderness. So here I am today, 85 years old. I am still as strong today as the day Moses sent me out. I am just as vigorous to go out for, to battle now as I was then. These are the ones that Caleb is speaking. That I was 40 years old. And I was, when I was thinking about that, and this ministry, and the fact that God has brought our vision career, that 40 years, God has been faithful. And Caleb at this time that he is 85 years, he is saying, Today I am 85 years. And I am strong as I was then. That I am able to move. I am able to go for battle. And he tells, he tells Joshua. Give me this hill country. Give me my land. Give me my land. Because I am strong as I was then to conquer and to do exploits for God. And when I was thinking about our vision career, and when I aspire the vision he has, and what he's speaking in and what God is speaking to his spirit today. I have not heard him verbally say that. But by the look of things, when he talks about Shiloh, when he talks about, about the cathedral at Shiloh, when he talks about the campuses, I can see a man who is talking like Caleb. That I, it is, was 40 years ago that God spoke to me that start, take up, I am calling you to ministry. And 40 years I have been faithful. I have followed the Lord wholeheartedly. And even today, give me Shiloh. Give me Gomba Estate. Give me Kukenda. And the rest of the campuses. I can see what the spirit of God, what the, spirit, the bishop is speaking in his spirit. That I am strong as I was then. And I am able to conquer. I am able to conquer and do exploits. Because that God who was with me then is with me even to this day. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. I am strong as I was then. 
And when I think about my life, and I look at myself, if Bishop would be speaking like that, because I sense that is what he's speaking in his spirit, that I am able to conquer, that I am yet to see what God has for me after these celebrations. What about me? A young man who has come in and found a ministry moving. What about me? Where am I supposed to? What am I what should I be saying? What should I be saying at this day? I have seen a man who has followed God faithfully, who has followed God wholeheartedly, and God has proved faithful, and God has proved trustworthy, and God has proved dependable. So even me as Moses, I can cling unto this God. It has not been easy. For those who have interacted with the bishop, had him speak during his sermons, you can tell what has, he has been going through all this time. But one thing that is stand out, that is even as we celebrate the 40 years, God has been faithful. God has been faithful to a man that has followed him. And God will remain faithful even for wherever he is going. May the Lord continue to bless his vision. I am to us that are started hearing this word this day. I want to tell you this morning that God is faithful. The Lord has, that has been with our bishop. The Lord that has carried this man for the last 40 years. He will be celebrating God's faithfulness. And you know, for us that have come in between, we will not be celebrating 40. We have those who have come in between. It's a short period. But him, he has the heart of the matter. Because from the first year, from Across the Lord to another sanctuary that was here. And to this sanctuary today, which has gone through some metamorphosis until it is done this day, God has been faithful. And there is a testimony behind this. My question is what are you celebrating? My prayer is this. As we celebrate 40 years, you will make up, you will make up your mind that it shall not be just a celebration. As we join Bishop in celebration 40 years, it shall be a landmark in your life. It shall be a landmark in my life that I'll be saying when we were celebrating 40 years of deliverance church ministry in Zimmerman, I made a decision to follow Jesus Christ. I made a decision to surrender my life to Jesus. And for you who is 40 years, make sure you celebrate this 40 years in style by accepting Jesus Christ in your life. That is the best gift you can give to yourself. That is the greatest gift you can give to yourself. If you are here in your 40 years, you have not known the Lord all 40 years and above. And this ministry has been here. And you could have been a neighbor to this church. You have been seeing men going and coming in. And even you have been a member. But you have not known Jesus Christ. There is a problem. We cannot celebrate 40 years and leave you in darkness. It is not fair to yourself. Do justice and surrender your life to Jesus Christ. Do justice to yourself as we celebrate these 40 years. Everyone under the sound of my voice and you are not born again. My prayer to you is this that you will make up your mind to follow Jesus Christ 
it will put an admark in your life. And you will have something to remember. That when we were celebrating 40 years, I gave my life to Jesus Christ. If God can be faithful to a bishop for 40 years, is, is it just only your salvation he is not able to keep? Just your salvation? No, it cannot be so. God is faithful. And he is able to keep you. So even as we move on, for those who are not born again, kindly don't go home and saved. Usikubari kwenda nyumbani na thambi. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. A call to salvation as we celebrate 40 years of this ministry here. Because God is taking this ministry somewhere. And for you I know you are a believer. And there are things you have been struggling in. There are things that you have been fighting in your life. There are things you have not achieved. There are things, there are goals you have not attained. And you have been fighting in, out, battle, in and out. I have good news for you this morning. That even as we celebrate 40 years, there is a reason for you to suit back. Look at your life and ask yourself Is he the same God whom I believe in? Who has been faithful to this ministry for 40 years? What about this issue that has been troubling me all this time? Five years, one year. Does it mean God is not able to do it to deal with it? No, it is not. God is still faithful. And I want to say again, He is faithful. For your situation, don't allow yourself to go home with the situations in your life, with circumstances in your life, unattended by the Lord Jesus Christ this morning. Unattended by the Lord Jesus Christ this day. Because we are in a mood of celebration. There is no reason for you to come. You come to church when you are heavy burdened. You are loaded with the issues in life. You are even loaded with the sin. And we are celebrating the faithfulness of God. We are celebrating the goodness of the Lord. Then you walk out of that gate with the same burden and issues troubling your life. That is why I am saying, you need just to ask yourself, what could be the problem? What is the problem with me? Is it with me or with my God? It is, it is the issue is not with God. You have not surrendered. And I pray this, that is, as we progress, you will make a point. You will make a reasoning to surrender to the Lord. You surrender to the Lord. You surrender to the Lord. Don't go home with your burdens. Don't go home to, the, to your burdens. Because Jesus is promising to take every burden. He is able to take every weight in your life so that you may celebrate properly. So that you may be able to celebrate properly. You cannot celebrate 40 years when you are still in bondage. You cannot celebrate for it is just on the ribs. In your spirit you are still groaning and mourning. And you are burdened. You cannot. You cannot celebrate the Lord when you are in the bondage. It reminds me of Psalms 137. Kaidre. Psalms 137. Psalms 137. By the rivers of Babylon, we sat and wept when we remembered Zion. There on the populace, we hung our harps. For there, our captors asked us for songs. 
our tormentors demanded songs of joy. They said, sing us one of the songs of Zion. Verse 4, how can we see the Lord's song in a foreign land? Praise the name of the Lord. How can we sing? How can we celebrate? How can you celebrate the victory of God for this ministry? When you are still in bondage, when you are still in body in your mind, by issues and things that not please God, how can you sing the Lord's song when inside your spirit and in your heart, you are still in bondage by the pressures of sin? It is not possible. You can't sing the Lord's song when you are in a fallen land. You cannot celebrate 40 years together with the brethren of this Zimmerman when you are still held captive by the power and the bondage of sin. The Lord is saying it is time for your deliverance. It is your time to be set free. It is your time to be set free. Your freedom has come. Your freedom has come. In our celebration of 40 years, your freedom has come. We are proclaiming freedom to every man and every woman who is in bondage of sin. Don't allow the enemy to whisper you that you can still celebrate with us. That you can still celebrate with us when you are still under the bondage of sin. It is not possible. You are still bound. You are still in prison. And the Lord has said, in this year of celebration, your year of jubilee is now as we celebrate 40 years of God's goodness, God's faithfulness, God's mercy to this ministry. And you know, in our celebration, as our, our speaker said in the morning, when we celebrate in this style, with us giving in our hearts, we, we get the strength and the power to move on. We increase when we give thanks. When we give thanks for what he has done. We open doors. We open avenues for God to increase us as he did with the loaves of bread. And when we do that as a ministry, you can be sure this ministry is going far. The only thing that will make you be left behind is because you continue to remain under the bondage. Don't allow yourself to be just a Christian. Find your place. Find your place. Because that is what the Lord is calling you to do. God is calling us to live a life of freedom. To, is, to live a life of uh, liberty. No more sin. No carrying of burdens. There is one that carried our burden. At the Calvary. The Lord Jesus Christ. Why would you continue to carry burdens? Regardless of their nature. Regardless of their type. Every burden Jesus is carried. Jesus carried every burden. In our lives. And that is the call we have this morning. That there is an exchange in this place this day that somebody will take upon the yoke of Jesus Christ because it is light. And for this, you will be able to celebrate with the rest of the brethren because the Lord will have done it for you. Praise the name of the Lord. I believe you are making up your mind to come to the Lord and to lay every weight at the altar and to lay every burden because Jesus is saying that he is here and he is willing to take up your burden.
He is willing to take every weight in your life. So that you may be free. Look at your neighbor. Look at your neighbor. Does he look to be a person or a man or a woman who is free? By the look of things. You know, sometimes I hear the bishop say, talk to your neighbor. I hear the, the pastor say, say a word to your neighbor. In the morning, our, our speaker was telling us, say thank you to your neighbor. And some people will not, will not even open their mouth to say thank you. Some people will not even raise their hand to say hi to you. And you have not done them long. They will not look even at you. And they will not say anything. No matter how the preacher insists that we say hi, you greet them, they will not. They are groomy. They look discouraged. Start to intercede for your neighbor. Because I have heard on, the, on several occasions, the bishop say, let church be church. Praise the name of the Lord. When people come when they are free, when people come when they are free from sickness, from diseases, and from sin, church will be church. That is only when church will be church. Because some people come so heavy ridden. When you tell them smile, why are you telling me to smile? And the things that I'm carrying. Why are you telling me to say thank you? And the many things that are troubling me. Little do they know that Jesus Christ has taken their burdens. Those things that are making them to look groomy even in a church service. In a church service. In a church service. Me, I come from a distance. Coming here. Sorry. Uh, I fellowship at Shairo. For those who are meeting me for the first time, two years ago we, we left this place. Uh, we came here to Peter to talk about Oh, Miakambiri, Idio Peter. Hey, to So we came here to And thank God. Me, I come from very far. And I thank God. And every time that I'm going to church, I have always this in my spirit. That I can't come all this way. I wake up early and I go to church. Then I, I, I come out of that church the way I have gone. Inside of my heart, I have a cry to God that every burden and everything that is troubling me, I will leave it at the altar. Everything that is troubling my mind, I will leave it at the altar. Whether I, by look of things, I might not have what I, I would think I need to have. But I have a God who has taken every burden. As I wait for God to perform miracles in my life, I am very free from everything in my heart and in my spirit. I know you are witness. There are people who come to church. They are grooming. They can't smile. You don't know who has quoted them. But I won't tell you, my sister, my brother. Don't allow yourself to go home the same you can. How would you come to church then go burdened? It's not good. It's not. If your burdens are not taken care of here, I don't know where else they will be taken care of. And there is no other place better than here. So kindly, lay your burdens at the altar. The master is willing to take every burden, every weight. I want to speak briefly about Thanksgiving. And I know some people when we talk, we think about Thanksgiving, they will even ask, 
Why give thanks? Why do I give thanks? Even your mouth is, even your tongue is heavy to say thank you Lord. Because the devil has bridled you that you are not able to see yes you are in church yes you are not sick yes you are sober your mind is okay your heart is okay you are not in hospital and when we would tell you to say thank you Lord you don't have wants to say thank you. Because the devil is allow you have allowed the enemy to bring a picture of the things that you don't have. Of the things that you have been praying to God. Of the things you have been trusting God to do in your life. And even to this day they have not been done. So when we say it is a moment and a season of thanksgiving for the 40 years, you are wondering, 40 years and have been struggling in and out, in and out. I have nothing to show physically that God has been on my side. And you are seated here. You are healthy. Only that you don't have money in the account. Only that you don't have a vehicle. Only that you have not managed to get a plot which you have been praying God to. But you are here. My sister, my brother, don't allow the enemy to cross up on you. You fail to see what God has done for you. Kaidri Psalms 106, verse 1 and 2. Saburi mia na sita, mustari wa kwanza na wapili. Praise the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Who can proclaim the mighty acts of the Lord? All of Uri declare his praises. Praise the name of the Lord. Who can proclaim? Who can fully complain? Com com who can fully proclaim? The mighty acts of the Lord. Or who can fully declare his praises? Who is that can praise the Lord enough? That is what the psalmist is asking. Who can really proclaim the acts of God? That he can count one after the other. That he can count the blessings of God upon his life. One after the other. The, the psalmist came to this point and asked, there is nobody and who can be able to count the acts of God upon his life. If you can, there is a problem. If you can fully say from the day one I was born, up to this day, the, all that the Lord has done, it is not true. God has done mighty deeds in our lives. God has acted mightily in us. He has done wonderful deeds for everyone that is seated in this room this morning. And we have a reason to give thanks to his name. We have a reason to offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving to him. Because he has done great things. He has done great things. Psalms 107. Verse 1 and 2. Give thanks to the Lord. For he is good. His love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord tell their story. Those he has redeemed from the land. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Give thanks to the Lord. For he is good. 
For his love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord tell their story those he has redeemed. Let the redeemed of the Lord tell the story of the goodness of the Lord, of the faithfulness of the Lord, how they have seen him, how they have experienced him as he saved their souls, as he delivered their lives. Let Moses tell what the Lord has done for him. If you don't have, if you don't have no reason to tell, kama to thank una, God for, Moses can tell you a story Moses kupa how God has been faithful mungu since childhood Seen up to this day. Since I came to Nairobi, and I struggled here and there, I, my life was, I don't know how to say it. But God has been faithful. For those we met when I came to Nairobi, because I have a few witnesses here, I have a witness in the house. Praise the Lord, my witnesses. That God has been faithful. When I walked into these streets of Nairobi, as a young man, without knowing where to go, where to come from. But God has been faithful. He has kept me safe at a point of giving me a family. To a, to set, to a point of settling me. And I was remembering when I came to Nairobi, when I was staying with my colleague, my brother, I was staying with my brethren, and we were staying for in one room, that self-contained room. We were four of us, four gentlemen, but we loved the Lord. We loved the Lord. And we stayed for two years until the Lord blessed us. And we moved out of that place. And I was just looking back and saying, in that room we would, we would, uh, we would, uh, we would contribute every month 300 for house rent because we were paying 12 and we were faithful and in that house of men we had rules and regulations and we observed them very well because we don't want it to be a stubborn block to our brethren if it is that Moses whom now God has settled and now he's staying on his own what would I say? I have a long story to tell. I have a lesson to thank God that God is able to leave somebody who has no nothing and give him something and provide for him and to make him stand. I was, I was a preacher even then, but I was not a preacher as I am today. God has continued to work in my life. God has continued to mold me and to open my eyes and to see what he is doing. I want to say this, that being faithful to God is key number one. Sorry, being thankful to God should be our way of life. Should be thankful to God should be our way of life. And in our lips, every time we open our mouth to speak, let's always desire. Let the first thing that proceeds out of our mouths is giving thanks to the God who has kept us, who has sustained us and brought us this far. You might not have so many things that you have attained by the look of our eyes. But, but God is working. But God is in the process of blessing your life, of multiplying your life, of making increase in your life. And I pray this day that you shall always approach the presence of God with the, the thanksgiving because of the little that he has done. 
Because by doing that, he is faithful to usher you into the land of greatness. To usher you into the land of greatness. Because as we are going to see, as we continue to wait upon him, as we continue to wait on him, I want to welcome the praise and worship team. And I want us to sing one, one song, one hymn. Thanksgiving to the Lord. We are celebrating. We are giving thanks for what God has done. But when you look back, you are asking yourself, what do I thank God for? What do I thank God for? And yet in my life, it is, has been trouble here and there. My sister, my brother, I pray that God will open your eyes to see what is laid before you. To see that what the, he has kept a hand of you. Open your eyes so that you may see the hand of God that is willing to move in your life. You are in our service this morning. You are burdened. You are asking, why should I give thanks to the Lord? Yet I have all this baggage. I have all this weight in my life. The Lord is saying, the time for your liberty, the time for your freedom is today. The time for you to be set free so that you may see once you are set free, you'll be able to see the many miracles, the many great things that the Lord has done in your life. Asante.